Alright, what's up, YouTube? Today I'm gonna be talking about the day I almost died, part two. And if you saw the last one, you would know it was very serious. But let's get into this business. So I'm playing some retreat hot point with the SN6. But I really want to talk to you guys. The story is very, very serious. You know, it's very scary. Uh, probably the scariest moment of my life. You know, I was. It was horrifying. So I'm gonna tell you guys, man. So it was. It was a. It was oh my a God, fresh. I'm Let's go. Bro, I'm, bro, I'm in the middle of it. it right Alright, right. Right, back to the topic, guys. So I was in a, it was a fresh Monday morning, you know, it was, it was a good Monday morning. A school, a, a Monday, a school morning, you know. One of those Hard days where you have down. school, you're just like, ill. School? Really? I hate school, trust me, I hate school. I'll do anything. I will, I will lie that I'm, that I'm sick to not go to school. And I was that, I was, I was that guy. I was that guy. So I was eating breakfast, you know, just a normal breakfast. And for some reason, while I was eating this breakfast, I started feeling like my throat kind of weird. Like if there was some, you know, some sort of mucus stuck in my throat. And you know, when, when there's mucus or something stuck in your throat, you clear your throat. <clears throat> and no matter how much I did that, it, just, it didn't seem to help. And I, I, was, I was wondering why. I didn't know why. So I'm watching TV, you know, I'm enjoying my breakfast. And after I was done, for some reason... It just wasn't, it wasn't out. It wasn't out, uh, I still had the same feeling, and I couldn't fix the problem. And on a situation like this, it gets scary. I mean, right at this point, it's not too bad. Ooh, hip fire. So I start clearing my throat, you know, I for a good like three minutes, I'm there <clears throat> trying to really clear my throat, trying to get this thing out, because it was really, really, really bothering me. To the point where I needed to do something about it, you know, it's bothering my throat. I felt like it was clogged in there, and it's it was very bothering, and I had to get it out. But now back to the story. I, you know, it was very scary to the point where it wasn't coming out. So I decided to take a step out. You know, at this point, I, I'm nothing's coming out. I'm very scared, and I'm I'm trying to get this this freaking little mucus, this bugger or whatever it is in my throat. I'm trying to get it out. I really want it out. It's bothering me, you know. <laughs> it's getting out. So I hop outside, get some fresh air. You know, mind you, I'm a, I'm a, like nine, ten years old at this point. I don't remember how old I was. I think I was ten. And I'm trying to get some fresh air. You know, I heard that you know fresh air could help you breathe better. Blah blah. You know, got the trees, the plants, oxygen. So I'm here trying to get some fresh air. Maybe it'll help me clear it out. I spent a good thirty seconds just <clears throat> coughing, <clears throat> like forcing coughs was not working it was to the point of no return i was getting very scared and no matter what i did this wasn't working after a minute of me staying outside to do that my dad steps outside you know i was at the front porch my dad steps outside he talks to me he asks me like uh, are you okay he, he comes he comes outside and you know basically asking me like if i'm okay i'm all right like what's wrong and i told him i told the story i couldn't get it out and then out of nowhere it just hit me you know, I was going for it for in for another gasp of air. You know, just go, and it just wasn't. I, I it just my my throat locked. Like it locked. I, I literally was breathing not like breathing a, a little a little dust of air. I was like, I couldn't breathe. So fucking scary, man. So scary. So uh, by this point, at literally at that time, I'm freaking out. Shit just got serious, very serious. You know, I can't breathe. Worst sign ever. Like things are are really what the hell is that doing? Hovering or glitching? At this point, it's very serious. I'm very scared. You know, this is life threatening. Uh, this could be a lot of things. I'm a ten year old that have no idea why I can't breathe. You should be able to breathe. It's a normal thing. <coughs> and I'm just scared to death right now. So as I'm gasping for air, like trying to breathe something, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm basically breathing at this time about one twentieth of the air. If I were to describe to you how little air I'm breathing, if, out of every like breath you drink, like you know you drink, you you breathe in a good amount of air. I was breathing a good description. The way described is one twentieth of that. That little just <clears throat> like through a coffee straw, you know. I'm just, <laughs> no, I'm breathing nothing, man. I'm I'm breathing, I'm breathing blanks. So I start panicking. What does every little kid do when they when they can't breathe? Well, not a lot of kids get in this position, but they panic. And at this point, I'm I'm practically I'm starting to cry. Like I'm crying, you know. I'm shitting breaks. What's going on? Why can't I breathe? A million questions are just popping into my head, and I'm very scared at this point. I'm very horrified. I don't know what to do. And my dad takes me inside. He's like, "All right, let's go inside." 
and he said he puts me on his lap and I'll never forget this moment because this is what really really scared the shit out of me my dad <laughs> my dad yells sorry if I get my if my, I get watery in my eyes man this is really hitting me but my dad yells at my sister like very serious and very loud like call 911 and at, <laughs> at that point I'm like shit man shit just got serious very serious you know they teach you when you're little if, if, if you're calling 911 it's for an emergency you know, someone's dying, someone's getting mobbed, someone is getting killed. You know, it's serious. So I'm here panicking, you know, crying my eyes out, literally my bawling my eyes out, trying to stay, you know, calm. But my dad is, my dad has me in his lab at this point, trying to calm me down, tr trying to tell me everything's gonna be okay. You know, he's trying to calm me down. It's a smart thing to do because I can't barely breathe. I'm literally like at the point of no return. I can't breathe. No oxygen is coming out of my system and. He's doing the right thing, trying to calm me down, because it's worse if I'm crying and I'm, I'm all crazy. I'm not gonna be. I'm breathing. I'm breathing less. It's just making the situation worse. He manages to calm me down for a good like 30 seconds to a minute, and he tells me, he tells me, Brian, breathe through your nose, breathe through your nose. And he, he 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 demonstrates. You know, he's like. And at this point, you know, I'm scared. I have. I don't know what to do. Like, what do I do? A 10 year old can't breathe. What? I have no answers. Obviously, you're gonna listen to your dad, you know? You're gonna listen to the man who raised you. So, I'm listening to my dad here. He's telling me to breathe through my nose. I'm breathing through my motherfucking nose. And for some reason, in a weirdly strange way, it was working for a little bit. I managed to, you know, breathe in some oxygen. Now, it wasn't it wasn't enough to where I could survive for a long time, but it was to enough where I could, I could, you know, maybe stay conscious, stay alive for a good couple more minutes before the ambulance, you know, before the ambulance arrives. So I managed to get some oxygen in, and all I remember is me quietly, you know, just passing away, like going, going throughout the moon, doing the sleep night, lullaby, peace out, you know, it's, it's going down, and I just remember myself crying a little bit, and it slowly depleted. It got to a point where I couldn't breathe anymore. It's depleting. Um. You know, it's scary. So I pass out, you know, crying, frightened, all that stuff. And my dad, I wake up to a light in my face. I thought I was going to heaven. I thought I was gone, you know. You, you don't really feel conscious of anything. I thought maybe you're really dead. No one will ever know. But I felt I felt like I was in. Like, what, what do I feel at that point? But I remember light shining into my face. And the doctor, and not doctor, but ambulance coming. And they put an oxygen mask in my face. So guys, I remember just the oxygen mask going to my face. And allow me to breathe and gasp for air. Finally, you know, if it if it came down to any maybe one or two minutes longer, I probably would have been gone for sure. You know, I knocked out due to the lack of oxygen, not able to breathe, and that's something you can only stay alive for a couple minutes. And I was so grateful, so happy that they managed to you know wake me up, take me alive, and not dead. It was very scary, guys. Very scary experience. Oh my god, and I'm wrecking. Oh my god, who wants more? Oh my god. Uh, so at that point, I remember, you know, going in the ambulance, my dad coming with me, we went to the hospital, they injected, I'm pretty sure which was a steroid, into my ass cheek, to open up my lungs, which is smart, but that shit hurt. On my, my big fat ass cheek, they stuck a freaking huge ass needle in there, and boy, oh boy, man, I, oh, that was terrible pain. So I'm not gonna lie, guys, I was very traumatized, and I mean extremely traumatized for a good two, three years. I, I would be scared to go to sleep. I'd be scared to even think about, you know, what happened. I, I, I would be so extremely scared to go to sleep and then feel, you know, having a, the back of my head like I might not wake up tomorrow. You know, I might die for real, forever. I might, you know, when I when I would wake up with or go to sleep with just feeling like a little mucus in my throat, I would be scared to death thinking, you know, I don't think I'm going to wake up tomorrow. It was, it was very traumatizing. And I really never want to feel that experience again. And I've, I've been lately a little bit sick with asthma stuff. And I've been going to a doctor. But I've been really trying to, you know, focus on being healthy, work out more and stuff like that. And it's been paying off. So it was a crazy experience. Uh, you know, I'm thankful that I'm, that I'm alive again, like I said. And I have a couple more stories you guys would like me to share with you about near-death experience and stuff like that. You know, I've been a lot through my life. And I'm just grateful that I'm here now and talking to you guys. So I hope you guys like the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you guys really enjoy it, make sure to hit like a thousand likes. No, that I hit 2,000 likes, and I just want to say thank you guys. I want to say one more message. You know, just be grateful for everything you have. Love life, enjoy life. Life is beautiful. Life could be hard, could be stressful, could be frustrating, could be you know you get mad and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, life is beautiful, man. You just gotta embrace everything, learn to love people, learn to be happy, and that will really take you far. Apathy out.